coding masterclass with Claude AI. Here we go. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I personally have been able to code a fully functional app with every functionality you can think of and sell it to a client for three and a half K. Yes, that price is not something crazy when it comes to apps, but it's good money. And when you can do it simply with Claude AI or any mm, mainly, mainly Claude, then it's really good. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. And if you don't know me, I'm Chef Solech and I have been building automations, building apps, websites, chatbots, everything you can think about in the AI space and make a living with it. So without further ado, let's get into the video. By the way, I'm not going to have a webcam in this video because I'm running low on battery and in one hour I need to go to the airport to Barcelona. So really crazy content coming in, but yeah, I cannot have a webcam today. So sorry about that. Okay, so firstly, we are going to deep dive into the two models that Claude is offering to us. I'm on the paid version. It's way better. It's only 20 bucks. So I would highly encourage you to buy it when you're going to code with Claude because it gives you more capacity and all of the benefits. So I would highly advise you to buy it. And we're going to deep dive into Claude Opus 4 and Claude Sonnet 4. What is the comparison? Okay, so Claude Opus 4 on par or above GPT-4 in intelligence and reasoning. Claude Opus 4 scores higher on nearly every academic and professional benchmark than GPT-4 and Gemini 1.5. It's of course best for coding tasks, large code bases, understanding app architecture. Of course, that's why we are using it and not, for example, GPT or DeepSeek. It has the longest context window, can process entire code bases up to 200k tokens. This is what I love about Claude. It has a really big context window and you're going to see in a minute. Better at logical reasoning, planning or multi-file projects. For example, you can give it an entire Swift UI screen file plus design brief and it will generate modular clean code with extensions and reusable functions. This is crazy. Like Claude AI or Claude, I'm always saying Claude AI, but it's maybe we can call it only Claude. It's really, really powerful. But what about the Claude Sonnet 4? Also really good. And we're going to use this mid-tier model. Claude Sonnet 4, also really good and efficient. Mid-tier model, it's cheaper and it's faster than Opus. Uh, it's still, of course, very capable. It handles some minimum complex tasks like CP, like uh, also apps, UI layouts or error fixing. It's, of course, it's like the lower version. So it's best for day-to-day -day development. And it's especially if you're not building some huge and complex apps, you can chat more quickly without long processing times. So use this when you're iterating fast or debugging smaller pieces of your app. So now you know which models to use. And now we're going to talk about Claude. Okay, so what is even Claude and how does it function? Claude is a family of advanced AI models. This is really important to know. And it's developed by Anthropic. And the Anthropic company is founded by ex-OpenAI developers or engineers, you could say. It's trained with a unique method called constitutional AI. Makes the model more helpful, harmless and honest. Claude is really winning when it comes to coding, at least for me. So... Now we're going to compare Claude 4 with GPT-4 from OpenAI and with Copilot, uh, GitHub Copilot. So firstly, as I already said about the Claude 4 is it has some, of course, understanding. It's best for long structured prompts. It has 200k tokens of prompt context. Speed is kind of slower, but it's really powerful. It's a little bit more expensive. Style is calm, conscious, precise professional I would call it. Uh, use case of course large scale dev work so some development and stuff. Coding capabilities best structured code. So you should use Claude 3 Opus when you're building a full app and needs help across multiple files and logic layers. This is what I'm doing right now with my app and you want the cleanest most modular code. Use Claude, Claude Sonnet when you're in irritating or small features or debugging something fast as I already said. And what about the GPT-4? When to use this? Is it completely useful or is it completely useless or, or not? I mean in my opinion GPT-4 is solid but a bit more verbose and slower with technical tasks. I use ChatGPT mainly for day-to-day -day tasks because it's it's better for creative prompts and, and writing and then we have the copilot from github and it's great for code complete it's great for code completion in the ide but it's not intelligent it doesn't understand your apps logic and it's just a fancy autocomplete tool so there you have it really quickly and now let's deep dive into the coding itself all right so now we have gone over the tools and we're of course going to use Claude AI 
and you can see I have also here lovable bolt out new and cursor why why do i have this well as i talked in the last video lovable and all of these vibe coding tools are already dying out if you want me to make a video on them of course i probably will because it's still good to know how to use it for really fast use case or for some demos for clients but it's dying out because yes here it says create apps and websites by chatting with ai but in my opinion if you just chat some words you can never get a final product this is just my opinion you have to know some basics of code and this is why you're watching this video so i have also made some other videos for example building a simple app in six minutes you can watch it in my channel just in these six minutes you're going to see how to code with it how to understand a little bit of html css and javascript and boom you're ready to code way better things than with these auto or vibe coding apps. So we just got that out of the way. For this video, we're going to be working in Xcode. It's for iOS. If you want, I'm going to do an Android version. For that, it will be Android Code Studio. But for now, let's do an iOS version. So you're going to find Xcode, you're going to click, and here you're going to do download. But of course, firstly, we can talk a little bit about what Xcode is. It's a really, really easy, for me at least, uh, tool something like a visual studio code but mainly for apple you can read a little bit here but it's just super simple to be honest like swift the swift language is super simple it's way easier and more organized for me than all the other languages i just understand coding with swift so let's get straight into it all right so now i'm going to go a little bit slower for everybody to understand to get it right because sometimes when i watched some tutorials people were really fast and i just it was a mess so if i'm going to be talking slow or anything you can always put the speed up on 125 so i'm a little bit a uh, little bit faster hope that helps but for my watch time that would not be the best thing to do but whatever you whatever you like you can do it and let's get straight into coding the first app i already have xcode downloaded on my pc so i'm just going to open it and boom, already code. This is not what you're going to see. This is my app that I'm building right now. And we can have a look at it. So if you do command R, it's going to run. It's going to say replace uh, your app. And you're going to always hit yes because you want the newest version. Now here you can see it, it's building, installing, building complete. Now it's just installing the app to iPhone 16 Pro, which you can choose here boom and now it opened the app so this is a demo version uh you may have saw uh, the first versions in the past videos but it's it's progressing i'm progressing with the visuals but still really a demo version uh but yeah it looks it looks better and it even gets you to to some web and you can it, it works it has some functionalities so this is this is what we're going to try to recreate with our with our coding skills with Claude AI so yeah you can see it's a functional app if you want to log in boom you click this it asks you if you want to register you do open boom and you're here and you can fill your name and everything and boom we have xcode how you should see it after you install it you're not going to have anything here but that's completely fine because we're just going to create our first project you're going to click here on create new project click the plus and now listen carefully you need to do exactly as i do it so here in the multi-platform you're going to click ios application is going to be app and then you can hit next now product name can be for us it's going to be test one and organization identifier is going to be com dot we're going to do here the name test one interface should be swift ui language swift testing system swift testing with xct oh, sorry xc test ui tests and storage should be none I'm going to hit next now you're going to do new folder, I'm going to name it exactly as your app. So test one, create and create. Boom. So we have the basic done. We have the basics done. I'm going to click it to full screen. And now we should see uh, 
our simulator right here, we're straight up in the content view file. This content view file is everything that you're going to see in the app, in the actual app. So here you you could basically say that here you're going to code what you're going to see. Everything else is going to be probably the backend and all that stuff. So boom, we have hello world. And you can see that if I change, for example, this globe or anything, I'm going to change the text. It's going to change here. So I think you get the I think you get the point. And let's get straight into coding our app. All right. So now we gotta do the prompting. We gotta structure the prompt first, and we gotta of course think about what we're going to build. Hmm, so let me think about something. Uh, I want some app. Let's say I want the app that is going to display the Apple products simply. So normally we type something like make me an app, something like the app store for uh, maybe, I don't know. But this is not the way to get the best prompt, uh, to get the best results out of your prompt. So let me show you how to structure your prompt. All right, so I, I accidentally clicked it, but this is how you should structure your prompt. High level instructions, so you're an expert in iOS developer, blah, 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 blah. Then you should do the context. I'm building an app that does X, Y, Y, X, Y, Y. And then output format. Give me a swift code with comments or without comments, whatever you like. So first we're going to replace this or maybe we can just we can say that you're an iOS developer uh, in X code. Then for the context, we're going to say uh, I am building an app that will display products such as oh, such as iPhones. Uh, MacBooks and more. Boom. And yeah, we're going to say give me a swift code uh, with comments and and walk me through the process. Plus give me the file structure. This is really important. Boom. And this is literally, this is so important because now you have an coding expert with you. Boom. So if you do it like this, this is the prompt. Really simple. Let's save it. And now Claude will code for us and it will also walk us, walk us through the process. So now it already gives us the file structure and it's giving us the, this looks like maybe content view or Oh, no, this is complete implementation issue. Okay, so it's giving us the code for the app. Boom. Now it's going to code, for example, here we can see the product iPhone 15 Pro. This is why you need to know the code a little bit. You know, here we have iPad. Boom. So you got these, these whole blocks. It's all about the individual products. So this is the product, as you can see. And now Claude will take some time and it will code the entire thing for us. But first, uh, we can we can actually look at the structure. So we got Apple products app. Ours is named test one, but it's okay. And then we got to do all of these files and you got to navigate through this. So everything that goes like this. So everything that goes under this, basically you can think of this as this blue, uh, this blue one, the blue uh, folder. I wouldn't call it that. This is our settings. We won't be using this in this video, but then you got this main folder, I would call it which is this and under this you can see boom we got one file of one folder called app one folder called modules one folder called views one folder called view models and then extensions and then resources but under this blue one we have this one file you know it's filed because it doesn't have uh, this we have this file called apple product app dot xcode pro pro j so I'm going to just copy this simply like that. And I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to do new empty file. It already says Swift, but we're not going to use Swift in here. We're going to do Xcode project. 
so boom we have another one we're going to keep it right here and now let's do the individual folders boom apple product app so i'm going to just copy this one the the name of it to command c and if we see boom it should be it should be this one this is already done here as test one so that's okay and here we got to do a folder called app so simply right click you're going to go new folder and just name it app boom now here is the sub files in the sub folder so apple product app dot swift so we don't have to uh we don't have to do the that the dot swift because it's already in swift language so we're going to go with new empty file and just copy it here boom first new file then we're going to go with content view dot swift but we already have this right so we're just going to go back and we're going to go here and move it into this folder boom simple as that now let's find the apple products app so i'm going to delete all these comments i'm going to go back here and boom let's look at the code apple products app dot swift main app entry point import swift ui boom easy so i'm just going to comp i'm just going to copy all of this sorry just this because you can see here the new file starts and i'm just going to paste it here simple as that and now i'm going to go with models you can see the folder it's called models so i'm going to again right click here do new folder models boom and boom and i guess you know the drill it's called product category dot swift you can see it here if we go here models boom product category swift also oh, it's this one so i'm just going to copy that boom i'm going to go new empty file and just do it like this then really <clears throat> really fastly just copy this it probably ends yes boom it ends here delete the comments boom paste it and this is how you build your app of course there's going to be some debugging uh some problems some errors but this is essentially how you build the app you just follow cloud ai follow the structure and you should be good and if you have any problems what you do you just say for example if i would have a problem like this maybe right now it's not a problem so wait let me go here so for example delete this now the view is not going to be working it will have an error you see error like this what do we do so if you have an error in your code you just simply screenshot the screenshot the code with the errors just go to cloud ai boom and you say i have this error in content view if it doesn't have the code which the content view code which it has because it just created it we are going to of course paste the code so let me let me do that for it's going to be more clear I have an error in this code. Boom, paste it, send it to Claude, and now we're going to receive a new and without error code. It already says I can see the error in your code, blah, 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 blah. This is incorrect. It has to have the sum view because I deleted it. So now fix content view Swift. It has the sum. It even says us where the error was. So change from view to sum view. We're going to copy it, go back to Xcode, remove, paste, and now it should work super simple. Now we got another error and we would go back and forth because I, of course I, w you first need to do the whole structure, you know, you cannot expect it to work when you have half of the code, but this video is not about how I code and all that stuff. If you want uh, a full, 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 full workthrough of how I build an app, you can do we can do that 100 so write it in the comments this was just uh like a masterclass on how to code with it what is best or what ai is best to use and how to move with cloud ai we, we had some error handling we had how to do the xcode everything so i believe you should be able to code your sim the, some simple apps right now if you don't uh just leave it if you have some trouble just dm me on instagram Shafik underscore Solich or here in the comments. I'm always here to help you guys and Yeah, hope this video was good and yeah, see you in Barcelona. Bye. Bye